Welcome everybody to the Creation Wars. This is the uh, weekly uh, creative photography competition show with a twist. Um, every week we invite five masters from the Arcanum who pop in here and soon you'll see exactly what this twist is. All right. Uh, but first, before we get into the competition bit of it, I want to start with introductions. I want to go through each of the masters and have them introduce themselves, uh, give their websites, so, you know, they can give us a little fun fact or just something random or quirky about themselves or not. It's up to them. All right. So we're going to go from, we're going to go in a certain order today, okay? Um, and this is the same order in which we're going to have the, uh, the masters present their apprentices when it comes time for the competition. Okay, so number one up for bid is Angela Pan. Hey everyone, I'm Angela. I am a photographer outside of the D.C. area in Virginia. And um, kind of sad that I'm going first because I couldn't think of a quirky little fact about me. Um, yeah, I may have to come back to that. Sorry. That's okay. I, I'll uh, that in as well. That was a last uh, second curveball. I'm, I'm sorry for Angela. Yeah. By the way, everyone, if you happen to be drinking something, whatever it might happen to be, be sure to show it. Um, I feature a different New Zealand wine every week. This is a, a, a Carrick wine. This is called Unraveled, all right, which I kind of feel like after spending a week at this weird uh, uh, yoga retreat, which is actually kind of awesome. Um, so I'm getting, I'm getting right into this. Um, so if you have some, Angela, do you have any... Um, aperitifs tonight? Do I have, I'm sorry? Do you have any uh, boissons, any liquids that you're drinking to supplement the show? Well, I'm almost done with my glass of wine, and then I just have a big cup of water as well. All right. You drink your wine right out of a glass. All right. Right on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what you do in hotel rooms. Okay. Number two, uh, Mason Marsh, you're up next. Hi, I'm Mason Marsh from Portland, Oregon. I'm an uh, Arcana master, and today I am drinking... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to drink more of it here pretty quick. Uh, from <laughs> Edgefield Distillery here in Portland, this is coffee liqueur, which is only 20% alcohol by volume, which means I have to drink a lot. Um, but I'm pouring it into cocoa, which makes it that much smoother. And if there's one thing we know in Portland, it's coffee and liquor. So... <laughs> oh, fun fact about me. Unlike Ollie Dale, who was on the show last week, I am actually a Coast Guard licensed captain of a pirate ship. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. I've actually done it. I actually have shot cannons at other ships. <laughs> Whoa. And the Nikon. Great Blair. You are the Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> You're very <laughs> underdressed for that, Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, amazing. Never okay. The part. Never Number the part. three master from the Arcanum up for bid is RGW. Howdy, everybody. Well, you know, I was Trey. I was so hoping for the uh, for Andy to come up with some new, you know, major uh, thing for the Creation Wars where it opens up and there's these explosions and everything. And so I have to just go, woo! Creation Wars! Yay! Is that enough? Is that <laughs> Hi there, I'm Robin Griggswood. Welcome to the Creation Wars. Um, fun fact about myself, well, I live in SoCal. I am drinking water. Yes, indeed. It's a fine year for that, my water. Isn't and, that illegal uh, in SoCal right now? I think so. It actually is. I had to go all the way to Arizona to get my water. Um, now, actually, I just I just got back from from Yuma. Went to a balloon festival in Yuma, and uh, on our way back, we stopped at these sand dunes um, that were really awesome. I thought, oh great, I can shoot sand dunes. I jump out of the car, and this guy rolls up, and he's super friendly, super nice, and he was like, hey, you guys want to ride? <laughs> yes, of course we do. <laughs> so I almost died yesterday. It was great. <laughs> anyway, that's my fun fact. <laughs> that is a fun fact. The old hitchhiking almost died fun fact. That's a, a winner. Uh, okay, number four, um, John Arnold. Hey, how you doing? Uh, okay, um, I'm a photographer in the northwest of England. Uh, I run a website called Photo Walkthrough, which is where I've been teaching photography for a few years now. Um, I'm a master in the Arcanum. I've just started. 
and it's uh, 2.09 a.m. here. So that was uh, an entertaining thing to get ready for. Um, and tonight I'm drinking um, this, which is Magna's Irish Cider, and I'm drinking it over ice, as is the proper way, I'm told. Um, fun fact about myself. I'm fairly handy with a yo-yo. Does that count? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. handy. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I've got earlier cider just, just comes right out of the tap there. Uh, what what city are you in? I'm I'm not in a city. I'm just south of Manchester, so uh, I'm sort of in the countryside. Uh, I'm in a really great place for taking pictures, actually. Um, but I'm right. I'm pretty easy access to Manchester, Birmingham, northwest of Wales, that sort of thing. Nowhere's very so, far in our country. So place. you're GMT. I think you and I, John, are the only people in this hangout where it's actually Tuesday. For everyone else, it's Monday. Yes. Yeah. We <laughs> no, live that very nearly threw me. We live in the future. Okay. Three last night. Well, All right. Isn't, and last... isn't it like? Isn't it four a.m. where Stewart's at? No, I'm the same as um, John. So we're heading very fast towards the half past two. Yeah, GMT oh. here as well. Now I did. Oh, it I did set an alarm at the end of last week's show. You were saying it was four a.m. at where you were at. Yes, that's very true. I did set an alarm to get me up at 2.30, which will go off in 20 minutes, but it's an awesome alarm, and I'm tempted to leave it to run just to play it to you when it goes off. Speaking of that, before we do our, our fifth master introduction, I forgot to say this in the pre-show, so I'll say it during the main show. There's very little difference, by the way. But um, last time the show did go on a bit long, my, my apology. Actually, I blame Gino. Um, even though it's not his fault. I'm just, he's, sort of a, <laughs> he's just sort of a, like an, an ever-ready scapegoat. But one thing we'll, we will try differently this time, as suggested by our, our awesome CEO, Peter Giordano, that we keep the critique super-duper short and snappy, probably like 20 seconds if possible, 30 seconds, just hit the highlights. I think what happens, like, so people that in, in the Arcanum, they know this. People outside of the Arcanum, they find it to be just this black box of mystery. But we do have these um, really awesome critique sessions, these one-on-one -on -one critique sessions, where all these masters spend more than ample time with the apprentices, kind of going through five photos every five levels or so. And these critiques often span for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50, an hour. They just go on and on. You know, it's like the African queen. And so what actually happens in these critiques is that the masters, who are these fonts of information, uh, they just you know continue to talk about uh, the pluses and minuses of the photo, go on and on. It's incredible information. It's just fantastic. But we'll have to curb that incredible insight for this particular um, time. And so we'll just be really quick and kind of give our quick hits and just kind of move through these things, all right, like a knife through butter. That's how we'll critique these things. Okay, now that I've dispensed this piece of uh, possible help, uh, we'll go to uh, number five, who is uh, Ron Clifford, the big red dog. Uncle Cliffy. Hey. <laughs> I'm getting so used to being called the big red dog. I actually used to have red hair, so, well, I used to have hair, so. Uh, <laughs> <either way. laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Ron Clifford. I'm a master in that big black mysterious box called the Arcanum. It is a, a, a fantastic place to grow as a creative, as a photographer, as an artist. Um, you know, I really can't wait. I know we're doing photography right now. I can't wait to, uh, looking down the future, down that pipe, seeing you know digital art and, and hand-painted art and stuff. But right now, I'm super enjoying the photography. Uh, little known fact, I am a master at lightsaber bubbles. That's, that's the little known fact about me. So... Yeah. <laughs> now, now see, I don't know. Could I have gone a long time without knowing that, Ron? <laughs> in the pre show, when I was asking for like code words, and you guys couldn't come up with anything. Now, all of a sudden, we got guys with yo yo's, we got lightsaber bubbles. <laughs> like, you guys just had all this stuff just laying around, and, and no, didn't throw me a bone at all. D Trey, I tried, Trey. No help. It's no just help. so much fun watching you kind of wallow around, you know. Flounder. 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 But if it helps, Gino, I had very low expectations, and you did not meet you did not meet those at all. 
<laughs> well, well, listen, Trey, I think that's why me and you get along so well, is that you have appropriate expectations for me. <laughs> okay, so I want to start this show because I know practically everyone in the Arcanum actually watches this show, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Um, and maybe someday you'll be represented, or at least your cohort will be represented in this grand battle royale, this uh, amazing gladiator-type competition, this Thunderdome. Um, but um, I thought this would be kind of a fun time to do a few like Arcanemy type announcements and like fun, interesting stuff that's happening. So one of the first things I want to announce is I just got this amazing email from, from Google, and I want to share it in a minute. But first, I want Ron, who just introduced himself, to describe this incessant problem that we've been having inside the Arcanum when it comes to um, the way we post photos and the way comments are placed upon the photo. So can you, can you describe this yeah. problem while I get ready to read the response? Yeah, I, I'd love to do that. Um, um, first, before I say anything, I, I just want to say that the Google community platform is a phenomenal place to bring people together. I, I've uh, been using them since the beginning. and. Thank you, Google team, for communities. It's the most amazing platform bringing people together. Having said that, we're experiencing a little bit of a quirk, and especially the photos teams, in that we share albums. When an album share is made in a community, and somebody comments, it, comments on that album by clicking on it anywhere but the album title, it creates a spin-off post of the image. You've probably seen an album, and there's a main picture, and then three pictures down the side. Well, if you click anywhere on the main picture, or say you want to pick up, click on one of those little pictures on the side, you click that picture and think everything's going okay, and you make a comment. And then when you go back, you, you close out of that, and you go back to the community, there are now two posts, the original album and a spin-off picture of just, a spin-off post of just that picture that you just commented on. That wouldn't be so bad in and of itself, even though it clutters things up, but it's dissociated from the album. The comment made on that picture is not connected to the album. So when you go back into the album through the title, you don't see the comment made by the person that clicked on the individual picture. And so it creates a real bit of a, a tracking mess within the community. Is that fairly clear? Yes, very good description. So let me share this random image I just searched for. I searched for uh, Google is awesome, and I ended up finding this image. Uh, I will have this upon the screen while I read this email from Google. And this is actually from the Director of Product Management at Google. I will tell you his name soon. Because something I'd like everyone in the Arcanum to do as a bit of a surprise is take your best photo and write a little love note upon the photo to this individual. I will read the email thusly. I pulled everyone into a room today, and we had a very productive meeting. We're going to get this fixed. Danielle is running point on this issue, having to do with the exploding post in communities. Please don't hesitate to follow up with her or me directly. We have a plan, but it may take us a little time to get it resolved, especially as we bump up against the holidays. But you have my word. We're on top of it and addressing it as a high-priority issue. And there you have it. So, the, <laughs> so the gentleman that sent this to me, his name is Anil, A-N-I-L. So as you take your greatest creation from the Arcana, and then as you make your little love note, make sure you address it to him. I'm going to zip all, send them to your master. Your masters will send them to me in a zip file. I will make a master zip. Let me stop screen sharing because I'm using my hands a lot. Okay. okay, so send these love notes to your master. They will make a zip file. Okay, do it a week from now. Okay, they'll make a zip file. They send it to me. I will make a master zip file, and I will send it to him. He will just be image bombed with just awesomeness. All right. So anyway, so good news from uh, from Google. They're looking out for us. Yay! Yeah. Now, were you just randomly assigning that really awkward accent to this person, or is that in fact how this man speaks? No, in fact, I think he's probably Indian, and he. But I didn't want to do like a full-on Indian accent because maybe he doesn't even have that accent. I thought it would be ridiculous, so I just was being a bit dramatic. Uh, so you didn't feel comfortable speaking like Tonto during this? Uh... <laughs> no, 
Uh, this is this is more of the Eastern Indians, you know. There's there's different types. Not familiar, but anyway. So anyway, all right, cool. I was just curious if you knew him and you knew for a fact that he said issue instead of issue. <laughs> no, it's all good. And then I will give um, Arcanum update part two, and we happen to have three masters with us today. We have RGW, we have Ron Clifford, and John Arnold who are right now actively with me building out Sphere 2, which is the whole experience from level 20 to level 30, which we're just about to open up, and it's going to be super-duper maze maze. And I think what you're going to see, by the way, the reason we have these three wonderful people doing it is because they all come from different disciplines. So what you're going to see in these focus spheres, these focus levels... Is uh, wait, 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 wait. You just used one of the words, Trey. Focus. What? Okay. Ah, you okay. Right. Right. Boom. Darn it, I used a taboo word. Yeah, you used oh, one of the taboo God, words. No, try, no. By, by the way, you used it like 15 times before I noticed. I thought you were doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happens whenever we see a taboo word, which we go through before in the pre-show, is that we have to stop down the show immediately and then do an emergency critique from one of the patrons from our great Patreon. So... Gino, while I go search through our Patreon archives and find an image to critique, will you talk about the greatness of Patreon? Yes, yeah, and by the way, uh, I accept your apology for calling me worthless earlier when it was I who discovered your violation of the secret code word, so I accept it, your <laughs> apology. So, uh, yes, Patreon. Uh, many people probably don't know about Patreon because it's relatively new. But what you can do through Patreon is you go sign up for Patreon. It's free. You don't have to do anything other than sign up for it. But then if you like this show and you would like to be able to watch it live, there's a certain level. Which Do you know what that level is to watch it live, Trey? Is it like a dollar? What is well, that level? Well, you can, yeah, it's a dollar if you want to watch it live. But let's, let's say you're watching this for free on YouTube, fine. If you just have a penny, you can throw in a penny and you support us. Everyone's got a penny, right? Right. Yeah, I have 10 right here on my desk, so that would be a good, generous offer for me. But, uh, so anyway, you, you offer it. So now you think, to, some people would say, like, well, why would I pay anything? I can watch crappy shows for free all day long. Yes, that's the whole point. You're watching crappy shows. See, if you support this show, then you won't be watching a crappy show. You, the, your money goes to supporting not only the Arcanum, uh, which I have nothing to do with, so that doesn't really interest me. But, it, you know, if, if enough money comes in, who knows? Perhaps, you know, Trey will, like, throw me a free roll of film, 400 speed or something, you know. Um, so all of your money goes to worthwhile causes is my whole point. And it helps uh, improve the show. It keeps Trey out of the poorhouse. Nobody wants to see Trey in the poorhouse. He's got kids. Nobody wants to see two little kids, Scarlet, for example, out counting to 20 outside in the rain. Uh, so... That, that's basically what Patreon. Am I, have I nailed it? Have I got it right, Trey? Is that what Patreon's yeah, all about? Pretty good. Except the money doesn't go to me. It goes. It goes right into the Arcanum. All right. That's, oh, okay. All awesome. right. I knew I was missing a key detail, but I figured if I threw Pretty Little Scarlet crying out in the rain like some Dickinson character, that maybe that would pull at the heartstrings of people. You know. She will have to sell her crafts. <laughs> Actually, people people might want to see Trey live in the rain. I don't know. That might have backfired on me. Oh. But no, it doesn't support Trey or me or anybody else. It just goes towards improving this show. And I do think uh, we probably keep Stuart in his drug habit with some of the money. A small percentage does go towards supporting Stuart's drug habit. But other than that, it's all very well spent. By the way, before I share my screen here, um, I want Stuart to introduce himself. Stuart, I apologize. Please introduce yourself and, and tell people why, why you're here. Um, yeah, so I'm Stuart, I'm from just outside Edinburgh in Scotland, a member of Ollie Dale's cohort and trying to take the costume theme from last week and continue this week. I'm very disappointed that none of the rest of you have come in costume. Um, I'm approaching level 20 in the Arcanum now and I'm also an Arcanum hero, which means I spend my time with a bunch of other volunteers trying to improve the experience for everybody. And my website is over my shoulder if you want to see any of my pictures. Oh, very cool. Thank you so much. I thought you were experimenting with the new Google eye patch. No, no, it's for, the pirate for... theme from Ollie's um, costume last oh. week. But I also have something to compete with Ron on his um, bubble thing. I have a 
Oh, nice. Oh, Fun um, toy to play with. Sorry, Ooh. Stuart wins, Ron. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. So. By the way, Stuart, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking a, in your location. a Budweiser, um, not whiskey, but I guess I can do that next time. And um, yeah, once I'm finished and had a lot of drinks, I'll be editing the show together. So, Right on. Okay, so now back to our emergency critique. So I jumped into our Patreon, and one of the most recent posts I saw was from one of our live viewers, Lisa. She took a photo of her setup. It looks like she's having some wine, uh, some pita, Looks like the wine is called Chocolate Shop. It looks like she's also having a plate of bacon, <laughs> which always goes well with anything. Uh, so that's that. Okay, now even tray is made better with bacon. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta add a little bacon to your tray experience. Okay, so let's all just do a quick, you know, each of us, you know, 10, 20 seconds critiquing this image. Uh, this image is from. Uh, um, why did it say who this is from? Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. Backing it up. Who is this image from? I want to make sure we get credit, so on and so forth. Uh, this image is from Tim McAndrew. Okay, so we will go um, in the same order. We'll go through for the whole night. Angela, you begin. Give him uh, 20 seconds of sweet wisdom. I think this is a great image. I think the color and the processing is really nice, and I like the reflection. The only thing I find a little distracting is the uh, kind of the treetop on top. It kind of makes it off balance for me. Otherwise, I think that this is a very nice image. And I see a little duck in the shadows and the reflection. I think that's pretty cool too. Very good, um, Mason. You're up next. I'm going to echo Angela. The tree being chopped off at the top is disconcerting. Uh, I'd also like to see a little bit more on the left. So basically back up or widen out, and uh, I'd be much happier. Otherwise, gorgeous color, gorgeous tone. Very good. Next up, RGW. If I had a better Internet connection, I could give this a proper critique, but I'm liking these Turner-esque colors you got going on here. Very That's good. it, man. <laughs> okay, John Arnold, number four. Okay, I love the colors on this. I think the colors look beautiful. Um, I'm not with Mason. I wouldn't want to see more on the left. I like the way the tree on the left kind of frames the shot and, make, and sort of ends your eye there, sends you back into the shot. The, uh, the reflections are the star of the show for me for this one. Okay, last uh, Clifford, the big red master. Yeah, I well, I would echo the the one tree on the right leaving the frame is a little bit of a disturbance for me when when composing the shot, um, but that's my only real critique. I think this is an excellent photograph. I think the color toning is really well done. Great uh, complement with the the beautiful reds to the blues in the sky, and um, yeah, well done. Good job. Very good. I'll give my quick two cents. Um, I think it's pretty good. The whole thing reads a little bit dark. Um, I'm with some of the first two masters that I think the, the tree on the top left is a little bit distracting and the tree getting cut off on the top right is a little distracting. I think I might even zoom in and get those golden trees on the left and just a little bit of green on the right. Um, I think that might be an interesting composition as well. All right, so mm. there you go. I think a, a motorized vehicle possibly going across the water would have added a nice touch as well. But that, maybe I'm nitpicking. And, and squirrels good point. in the trees. Yes. Okay, so um, let's jump into a, a quick bit of news. Um, I know one of you has a new toy. Is that you, Mason Marsh? Show us what's going on. Unbox today the uh, new Apple, of course, iMac uh, Retina display. 27-inch iMac. I've got the... Uh, regular 27-inch iMac that I'm using right now. I just plugged this other one in just a couple of hours ago. So the the difference between the two screens is really amazing. I'm, um, I keep glancing over at this other one and it feels like I could step right into the shot. So um, I, I'm looking forward to editing some photos on it. It's gorgeous. So I have a question for you. I think I have the exact same setup as you, Mason. I've got the, the older iMac and the new Retina 27-inch iMac. 
And so when they're side by well, side... Well, come on, Trey, be honest. You've also got that Mac Pro sitting there. We've all seen the... There's the, the Mac well, Pro. Actually, it's the Mac Pro that's that's kind of feeding the 27-inch older iMac display. <laughs> uh, but what do you... Only when you have your images side by side can you see. But if you only had the retina, do you think you could see it by itself? Um, you know... I think it's probably a display that if you ask me in three months, I'd say that's normal to me now. Um, you know, I, I'm going to acclimate to it very quickly. I'm going to find that it's the it's the expected thing. And when I look at it's going to be like looking at an old um, uh, standard definition television or VGA display. When I go back and look at a regular iMac, I'll be like, ooh, why is it so rough looking? Um, the retina display is very crisp and... I'm going to be very happy with it, I'm sure. I think they're really distinct. I actually left my drool all over one at an Apple store just the other day when I was taking mine in for a repair. <laughs> and it was noticeable. I didn't need anything to compare it with. I was just I like, oh, <laughs> want. Okay. Yeah. So the, the only thing I, the only problem I have with that, I mean, aside from the fact that I don't use a Mac, but uh, my problem with it would be that I would feel like I have to go back and re-edit all my images because I would suddenly begin to see every little... <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I would see every little detail that I have to fix now. That that would be my only concern. The, yeah. always, uh, uh, everybody has to have their comfort zone pushed to every once in a while, Ron. Even, <laughs> even, even people as perfect as you. <laughs> <laughs> one of our uh, one of our fellow masters, Doug K, uh, has the Retina iMac, and he was saying uh, recently that he's had to go back and reprint some photos because he now looks at the prints and doesn't like them as much as his monitor. So <laughs> that's something I'm not looking forward to. So you guys want to get ready with the uh, the big competition? We already throw down. Let's do this yeah, thing. Let's do it. Bring it. Absolutely. Smackdown, Bring it. Yeah. Gino, have you got any awards or anything before we throw down with this big big competition? Yeah. I was uh, I was going to inscribe whoever wins uh, this week's competition <laughs> on the Blind Squirrels Fantasy Football League Championship Trophy. Of course, my name's featured prominently right here on it um, for last year. But anyway, the winner of this week will have their name inscribed on the Fantasy Football League Championship Trophy, which I will keep uh, here in my house. <laughs> so, I mean, this is prestigious. You know, this is big. Yeah, this is big. It's kind of like the Stanley oh, Cup. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's quite the non sequitur uh, trophy with, with the football up there. Yeah, Trey, well, I mean... Before, yeah. before anyway, we show other images, Trey, do you know, can you confirm that these won't end up on a Chromebook desktop as the default desktop? <laughs> no, nobody really knows. But actually, if we do have a trophy that we do send around, you know, like the Stanley Cup, you know, every member of the Stanley Cup team gets to keep the, the Stanley Cup for like a week or something, do whatever the heck they want to with it. But if we have our own trophy, we should decide what it should look like. I am right now putting in my vote for, like, a bust of Ron Clifford's head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be wise. <laughs> I'd, I'd be for that if you could open it up and put candy in it. That's right. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> it would be great, because you could have Ron Clifford's head, and you could go around to each cohort member for a week... And then, like, you could play practical jokes on your partner. You could, like, pretend like you're laying in bed and, like, put his head on the pillow and, like, pick him up the blanket so he's around the bottom. Because I'm sure everybody wants to do that. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'd be great. I think you, you need some more water in your head. I mean, the possibilities are endless, honestly. They are. Yeah, it boggles the mind what you could do with a, a fake rock leopard head. <laughs> Or what you possibly already have done with a fake Ron Clifford head. So um, some of us already have life-size Ron Clifford head busts in our house. I think. You know, you there, did say. we say we were going to start a competition here? Let's let's. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Clifford. Bring okay. it. Okay, so we will go in the the prescribed order. We're going to start with Angela. So people that are new to the show, let me describe what's going to happen. Is that. 
each of the masters in the Arcanum, they have about 20 apprentices underneath them. The apprentices all start at level 1, and then they level up to level 20, and then once they hit level 20, they move up to level 30, level 40, level 50, and beyond. Okay, this is how, this is how it works. And whilst inside the cohort of these various masters, they produce all kinds of works. They produce photos, creations. It's just sort of an artistic, uh, magical place. And so each of the masters in this competition, they have a task over this past week. They had to pick their favorite work, or a favorite work, because they have countless favorites. There's no doubt about it. They had to pick a favorite work and bring it into this competition. And in this competition, they will be representing one of their apprentices. They're going to share the work. They'll tell us a little bit about the apprentice. And they're trying to get all the other masters to vote on their apprentice to win. So there's a bit of gamesmanship. Everyone has a certain number of votes that we'll get to very soon. There's always some controversy. There's always some tabulation errors by me. So there's just a lot of moving parts in this competition. OK, so having said that, we will begin here first Angela Pan, who will present the work of an apprentice, and then it will get a quick critique uh, from each of the other masters. And so we begin, Angela. Okay, so for me it was pretty difficult to find one image that I thought was my favorite. I have so many great apprentices who create such beautiful work. So I kind of had a poll system going on in my cohort. I asked everyone who wanted to be a part of it to upload three images, and we all had a deadline for when we were going to vote for them. And then from there, I picked the top three. And my first apprentice that ever joined my cohort happened to be the winner. And she does great work. Her name is Sherry Miller. And uh, she is the type of photographer who sees the beauty in all the small things. She um, is always in her yard, or it's, I think she has a lake near her house that she's always photographing and just finding these beautiful things um, just with everything around her. So this is actually a feather that she saw in the lake, and it's a reflection, and she um, rotated it and made it, to me, looks like a butterfly. But she is great at finding the light and these beautiful macro images. And these are just a few of her works. And since being in our cohort, I think she's learned a lot about other types of photography and really expanding her um, genre of photography. She, this is one of my favorites that she shot. It's one of her son's marching band um, during halftime of the football game. There was great fog coming in, and she just photographed their band in this cool kind of alien-esque lights. But the image that I am bringing in for the Creation Wars is this one. I mentioned that she photographs um, a lake that's close to her house. She told me that she was out just photographing um, a foggy morning and she saw these birds coming in and just knew she had to shoot it. And if you know me personally, I I'm a little bit scared of birds, and so my first reaction <laughs> to seeing this was, oh my god, there's so many birds. <laughs> but I love looking at them from a far distance, just their formations and um, how they group together and fly. And so for me, looking at this image, I think she captured a great moment. She has great reflection, just the simplicity and um, in the backgrounds that she has going on in this image, and then the, just the great timing that she had of capturing these birds is just amazing. So this is Sherry Miller from our cohort. Very cool. Hey, Angela, if you don't mind, can you resize your window so it's more rectangular, and that'll make that image bigger for the viewing audience. There awesome. we go. Aw, oh, yeah. There you go. And also a little programming note. Um, if each of the masters would send a URL of their chosen image to Stuart, then in post-production, when he adds the bumpers on either side, he can also take the image and make it nice and big and overlay our, our faces with it so people can see it. Okay. Okay. Um, that is a very cool image. Awesome, Sherry. So now we'll go through, and we'll have each of the masters um, give their little quick critique on it. Okay, so we're going to go in the same order we're, we're going through. Uh, Mason, you are first. 
All right. Um, first off, I, I, I'm glad, Angela, you made the picture bigger because I actually couldn't see the birds at first. Um, uh -huh. I, do, I do like the shot. I love the reflections of the birds in the water. Um, but I, I feel like this would be a, just much more powerful if I could actually see more of the features of the birds themselves. Um, and as an aside, I think that marching band picture is completely kick-ass. There you go. All right, very cool. Um, Robin, you're up next. Well, basically, I've uh, virtually. I was actually maybe I'll just click on Angela's picture here, and I can actually look at it. Um, it's basically a very calming image. So it, it really depends on the purpose, the goal. Sherry's goal for this image. Go Sherry, if you wanted a very calming image, I think that you attained your goal here. It's it's very very horizontal. And uh, just it has the colors of a very calming type of uh, color palette. So that's a, a, the best I can do until I get ex actually what your goal was for this image. I think it's beautiful. And also, um, I was going to say about the uh, marching band image too. <laughs> that one kicks butt. <laughs> awesome. Okay, thanks, Robin. Okay, next up is John Arnold. Okay, um, normally I would look at an image like this and I would say there's no subject, but you know what, in this case I really think it works great. Um, this is, uh, I, I agree with Robin, I kind of want to know what the, what the purpose of the image was, what she had in mind, but I'm going to say I think what she had in mind was just to capture this beautiful um, the movement. And what I see in this is a movement of the, the birds just flying across, you know, it, it says something about the place and the time and the moment. And I could just see this printed beautifully large, really, really, really big mm -hmm. on the wall of like a sitting room or something. And it giving the room just a sort of a beautiful, calm place to be. Um, I think it's incredibly evocative of a, of a sort of a, uh, a place. And, uh, and I love the colors in particular. It's got, a, it's got a uniformity of color that I just adore. Awesome. And next up is Ron Clifford. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm like Robin in the uh, to the extent that I always like to hear from the the photographer or the artist uh, about the intent of the work, but for the purposes of the show, I'll go and have at it as far as the image goes. And I just want to say that we see thousands of images every day, and once in a while, an image will come across your path, and then um, you know a week, a month you know, a year later, you still remember the image, and they're very few and far between, and I think this is one of those images that we may not fully get this image in first viewing, but it's one that's going to stick with us. Um, as far as that goes, I, I agree with uh, uh, John. I think this should be big. I also think that it might even be a more powerful image if you drag down, and I'm only seeing the, the, the web resolution, so I don't know how much freedom you have to drag the, the top down, to make a very panoramic crop, eliminating the blue of the sky, making a fairly monochrome image, but very panoramic, very, very low, so that your your horizon line is actually in the the upper portion of the image and not the lower portion of the image. Um, just as an idea, I just love to be able to see that because I think it is all about the birds, and I think that would make a more powerful image. But I think it's a it's a fantastic image and one that would like the uh, football field, stick with, with you in your mind for quite a long time. Yeah, that's good feedback, Ron. I, uh, I like what you said about the top. I feel like there's a little bit too much uh, blue on top. I don't think that adds to it. I like, I really like that it's a study of grays. And then the surprising thing, that the only thing that's purely black and white, which of course is the two extremes of gray, are the birds. I think that's really smart, the way they, they pop off there. The other thing that I would have done, this is a super minor thing, is I would have deleted some of the birds from the left side, would have, you know, just gotten rid of them with content aware fill, just so that there's an equal amount of distance of, of blank space on, on each side. This is a, a, a small complaint, though, um, just for s symmetry purposes. I am not above, uh, you know, reductionism to make it more simple and clear right there in the middle. But super cool image. All right, also, we have this running chat here uh, that you guys can't see, either fortunately or unfortunately. But uh, there's one really nice comment that just popped up here from John Arnold that says, this is uh, 
this is a really good example of what's wrong with our, our he calls it our thumbnail culture, in that if you're looking at a thumbnail version of that photo, you would never see how interesting it actually is. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, there you go. Okay, thank you, Angela. Strong contender in the creation wars. How many votes will you get? Only time will tell. <laughs> do you have a title, or did she have a title for that image? Does she have a title? I'm not sure. Okay. Oh. Oh, some people title them, some people don't. Because that, sometimes that can help you kind of figure out where they were going with the image, what their intent was by what they titled it. Yes. For now, we'll just call it the Angela B. Pan um, image. Okay, now, cool. next up, Mason Marsh. All right, I'd like to introduce you to Paul Skip Zellers. Paul is a member of my wonderful cohort. I have 21 incredibly talented photographers, um, really not worthy of this group. But um, Paul is comes to the Arcanum as a former workshop participant of mine, and uh, he lives in Texas. And one of the things that really strikes me about Paul is he's, he's one of these quiet geniuses. Um, he comes from the IT field alike. A lot of uh, a lot of the Arcana masters actually, and he brings this sort of quiet contemplation to his work. He's very thoughtful and careful in his photography, and this is a photograph I took of him during a workshop he was on with me a couple years ago. Uh, he's always in good spirits. He's always a pleasure to have around, and I was so thrilled when he joined my cohort. I was incredibly honored, um, and I look forward to having him join me on a workshop next year. Uh, Paul submitted a photo uh, to our level um, five category, which is right after his first critique. This is one of his new works. He just made this a couple weeks ago, and when I had people nominate photographs from our um, from our cohort, this one came up, and I just I was smitten by it when I saw it, and I was um, even more. Uh, thrilled to know that other people in the cohort was also struck by it. So here it is. This one um, is Paul's contribution. Uh, it's a steam engine. I, I, I'm not a train fanatic, but I love this shot. I love the tone of it, the um, sort of romance of steam engines to me is uh, is really incredible. And I, I think there's a lot of uh, warmth to this photo despite its fogginess and um, out of the 12 or 15 I can't remember now um, photos that were nominated in my cohort this one really stood out and I was also just really happy to present Paul as an example of my cohort these are hard-working thoughtful very um, giving people in their comments to other cohort members and it's really Paul embodies what we want in the Arcanum and um, I think this photo is a type of photograph that I would love to make um, with the steam and the windmill in the back. I mean, there's all the elements that I would look for in a great photograph. So this is what I submit from my cohort for your consideration. One thing I will add, because in the spirit of Karen Hutton, I must mention this. Um, Paul has an interesting part of his history that I think bears into why he is such a great photographer. When he was 17 years old, his house burned down and his family lost everything, including all their photographs. And he is highly driven to capture moments uh, of his life and preserve them because he lost so much of his early life to fire. So I think that um, that adds a certain poignancy to his images, and um, you'd never know when you met Paul. He's just the sweetest, friendliest guy. He's certainly not sullen, but he comes from a place of a very um, somber kind of roots. So there you have it. Uh, if you don't vote for Paul's photo, other masters, um, you are kicking uh, dirt at that little 17-year-old guy who <laughs> lost everything in that fire and shoots photos to this day. Dirty pool, Mason. Uh, yeah, so feel free to... Now we know what you meant by in the spirit of Karen Hutton. I thought you were just going to talk for 30 straight minutes, but you were pulling at the opposite. <laughs> That's what you meant. <laughs> oh, I can talk, Gino. I can talk. So uh, there you go. That's That's the photo. I'll put it back up on the screen here.
By the way, uh, Masters of the Arcanum, I approve of this technique in the creation wars of tugging at the emotional heartstrings of both the audience and fellow masters. It's the winner technique. Well played, Mason Mark. <laughs> so, I like how he on screen shared so that he could say that too. Loves. Wait, did you did Love you guys girl. see the little can of for the money to deposit money that I'm going to have a, 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 I have up here here for my for my uh, my cohort member? Huh? Did you did you see that? Because she's you know she's she's poor and uh, yeah. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Okay, so uh, hey Mason, will you please reshare? Oh, you already did. I'm gonna because I'm kind of controlling like who sees what, so I'll I'll switch back and forth between this and whoever is doing the little critique. Okay, so. Angela, you will yes. begin with a mini critique. Go. I really think this image reminds me of Hogwarts. The first thing that I thought of when I saw it is Hogwarts. And I've never seen an image of a train look like this. I love the fog that's coming up. I kind of wish I saw more. I'm not sure if I want to see more of the top or the bottom. But I think if you saw more of the bottom, you see more of the steam and kind of that was that I think is the cool part of the image. And so I would just like to see more of that. Very good. Okay, next up is Robin. Okay, I have to click on it so I can actually look on it. Okay, so basically what I can see from here is that um, what I describe as processing artifacts uh, between the sky and the, uh, the train itself. There's just a little gray haloing, a little bit of maybe sharpening artifact, and this could just be that the hangout is, is pushing it, you know, compressing it too much that I'm not really seeing it properly, but um, I would love to see this image uh, with a, a little bit cleaner editing between the sky and the train. All right, good feedback. Uh, John Arnold, you're next. Okay, two things. I love the reduce and simplify technique. Um, this is just enough for us to know it's a train um, and sufficiently little that we can see some of the interesting details. I love the steam it gives in atmosphere. And I agree with Robin that there are processing artifacts. They look to me like tonal compression, uh, probably done with some sort of um, you know, clarity enhancing tool, particularly seeing them around the windmill, I'm afraid, and alongside the light at the top. But I do like the atmosphere. Very cool. And last is Clifford. I'm getting used to being last. It's OK. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like the idea of simplifying and, and focusing the viewer on 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 less of a scene. I'm a I'm a big fan of storytelling in general of a big scene, but I do like what's happened with the simplifying. Um, although, I don't know if it's driven it completely home for me in this one. I I do like the simple color palette and the atmosphere. Um, there's a lot of good elements, but I don't you know, feel they've come together. And, and finished the story for me. I don't think it's driven it all the way home. I think the elements are, are, are well done. Um, but I just feel as a storytelling image, it hasn't completed it for me. And I, oh, I want to be oh, so much. I'm always encouraging. But I, I just don't. I think this image, though, let me, let me be encouraging to the right person. If somebody uh, uh, was associated with trains or worked on the rail or antique steam trains, this would have a deep meaning. So uh, on that, it depends on the audience. That's uh, that's good feedback, Ron. Uh, my quick, really quick idea here is that I agree that storytelling is a little bit weak. It's just a sort of a photo of an interesting object. Uh, but also, I can tell that it was probably HDR, like 98% chance. One thing you have to watch out with HDR, with smoke and a few other things, is that smoke or steam or whatever it is, it, it takes on the, the light properties of whatever ambient light is around it. So you can see, like especially on the right, that the smoke has become blue. And really, smoke is not really blue. And that just sometimes happens with HDR processing. It should be a bit more of a, of a gray. Um, but that's kind of a minor complaint. I still think it's a pretty good shot of a of a train. I like compression. It's it's not too shabby. So that's my that's my feedback there. Okay. Uh, who is up next to share their photo? It is you, Robin. Okay. So get a screen share here. And bring up this is a photo by Ursula Klepper. 
And I chose it because it is, um, it's an iPhone photo. And I thought it was a great way of expressing, you know, it's not necessarily the tools, folks. I thought it was a fantastic capture. I think, you know, Ollie has his great video on the decisive moment where he explains to people what the decisive moment is. I think she really nailed it here. But I'm going to tell you something about Ursula. Ursula Klepper is our cohort champion for this week's Creation Wars. Even though she's been known to keep company with some odd folks, she will make you a bunny if she cares about you. She can carve apples and is a legendary duck wrangler. In fact, she's a friend to all animals. She's even taught some how to talk. Ursula has learned the mystical secret to making the perfect macro and takes time to care for her subjects to get the best from them. Oh yes, Ursula makes my ears swoon. Indeed, Ursula Klepper is a woman of startling, varied, and some might say miraculous ability. She works tirelessly to get the job done. And no matter what challenge I throw at her, she hangs in there through it all. Coming out at the end, having created beautiful images that amaze and delight. Yes, I think Ursula Clever is certainly worthy of a bit of showcase time here, for she is a true champion to the core. Anyway, I just love this shot. I love it to the <laughs> that was amazing. That was almost like, you know, watching the Olympics in 1986, or like an up-close and personal moment. Exa exactly. I wanted, I wanted it to have that feel, just because I knew you would comment on it, Gino. Yeah, so I just love that she included this this foreground shadow. I mean, you know, so somebody else could have just, you know, shot just the dancers, but she included this leading line. She she just picked the right subject. There's this uh, wonderful line between the light and the reflection on the road and the light up above that just pulls it all together. I, I just love this image. Anyway, that's a uh, yeah. It's open for critique. I, I love the, the fact that you came up with all of that just off the cuff. That ad hoc <laughs> love just came out of your heart, and I could really feel it. <laughs> I, I think she's a great person. All right, let's do, it, let's do a quick, unexpected emergency critique of the promo video of The Apprentice, Gino. All right, Gino, who has no votes, I should make clear. He gets no votes in the final vote. But here, you want to critique that video. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, uh, as far as me not having any votes, I love the fact. I love how Trey will not. Not only do I not have any votes, but Trey will actually like whenever I send him an email saying, "Hey, here, Trey, here's what I think about it." I'll get like a, a little three word reply back from Trey saying like, it, "It doesn't matter what you think," and that'll be the whole reply. So I always appreciate that. I, I just I, I like the directness of it all. It doesn't really matter, Gino. Quit replying to me when I say things. If, by the way, Gino, if, if it helps, I, I send that response to almost everybody. Okay, it's not yeah. just you. Oh, good. I'm in the almost everybody category. That makes it all feel better. Yes, thank you. Um, no, I, you know what I really loved about is that you you said um, that you were actually encouraging people to like pull at the heartstrings, and Robin Griggs Wood already had the heartstrings loaded in the gun. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> I, I blame it on Karen Hutton. The effing amazing Karen Hutton effing set the effing bar so effing high last time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I respected the uh, the video a heartstring. Before you even said it was okay, she was ready to go with it. Look, RGW, you and K-Hut, you're bringing the game. You're upping all the masters. They are going to come prepared. <laughs> They're going to be selling their, their apprentices. It's going to be unbelievable. Yeah. It's fantastic. 
was fantastic. Good, okay. good. I really, I do love all of my people, and I just, can I say, hi, people, you guys are so awesome, <laughs> I love you so much, I really do, every single one of you, and I want a chance to be on this show yeah. enough time so that I can feature all of you. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to have lots of shows, we're going to get like lots of repeat masters, all apprentices we hope will be represented at some point, at some point, when the show goes on long enough, it can happen, it can happen to you. Okay, now, let's go oh, into... By, by the way, Trey, real quick, real quick, uh, along with uh, masters doing what Rob and Greg just did, which is like pulling out the emotional heartstrings, I, I respected what Angela was doing during the video, which was just scowling at the video and like clicking her head, like, "Oh my God, how embarrassing! <laughs> Look at this groveling that's going on here." That I love. You know, you guys, you, you, you know, like she was throwing tomatoes at the at her camera. That was good. Can't help it. We've got to win. <laughs> Angela does have a good scowl, and Gino, I noticed that you're you're always very quick to notice the scowl of a female. Why is that? Well, uh, you know, it come, I think it goes all the way back to the womb. My mom was scowling for nine months, and uh, you know, <laughs> so now I'm just used to it. Huh. Okay, let's go into critiques. Quick critiques. Angela, you're first. Rob, you could you picture? Yeah, I'm in a second. Coming up. Okay. Yeah, straight back up so that I can switch back and forth. Yeah. For an iPhone picture, so there was no processing at all for this image either, right? Um, I think she did. I think she brought it in a little bit and did a little bit of cloning in the background, um, something that was sticking out. But otherwise, um, as far as I know, I didn't get that there was uh, much in the way of processing on this image. Yeah, I. She, uh, she is, she's not a major processor, just so you know, but she uh, does. Mm -hmm. I mean, for her general stuff, her everyday stuff. This was just sort of a whim shot. Yeah, I just think for a street photo, this is a really great um, moment that she captured. She got this right at the right time with the sun rays coming out from the building right onto their faces. I think it's great. The only thing that I find distracting are just the people um, on the left side. Um, other than that, as far as just the little processing in iPhone shot, I think that this is a really great shot. Awesome. Good feedback, Angel. Okay, next. Mason. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the video. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I love iPhone shots. I shoot a lot of them myself. The problem with an iPhone is there's not much dynamic range, and I really would like to see their faces. These look like interesting people, and it is an interesting moment. I'm curious about... Um, why they're dancing there in that particular spot. I love the light on the stones. I think that is magical. But them being backlit, um, I think if she'd gotten lower and put them in front of the sun and pop that little LED off her iPhone and give them just a little bit of fill light so we can see their faces, I would think that would be a magical iPhone shot. Um, I'd like to judge photos as photos and not necessarily by what camera made them. So there you go. Very good. Thank you, Mason. Okay, next up, um, John Arnold. Yeah, um, kind of with Mason on this. I, I, I don't feel like giving it a pass just because it's an iPhone photo. Um, I do like the fact that they're in silhouette. I don't I don't feel I have to see their faces. It's This is about the movement and the moment and uh, the question of why, they, why these guys are dancing on the sidewalk like this and... Uh, Sorry, I put my English head back on pavement like this. Um, if I have a criticism, aside from the fact that it is kind of grainy and it's kind of eye photo -y, um, it's the fact that the lady's uh, left leg, right leg, the leg that's on the right-hand side of the picture is being lost in the shadow. Because um, she's, she's making this great shape. She's got both feet off the ground. He's obviously holding her up. And uh, it's being lost in the shadow. And it took me a while looking at the picture to see that. Um, so... Yeah, I like it. It's a great moment, but uh, as, as a as a photo to be compared with stuff that's taken you know long long times to work on, I, I don't think it really compares. I'm sorry. I like the video. Don't apologize. <laughs> don't apologize. Just go full force. Okay, uh, Ron Clifford. Yeah, I like um, as a as a documentary photo. A street piece. I think it's very well done. Um, I think you're in the moment. 
obviously she's not there as a, uh, it's not a studio setup, she doesn't have her big camera with her, and so she's captured uh, a, a really great moment. Um, I'm, a, um, I'm all for processing, especially what I call, you know, kind of border patrol and looking for little things that cause distraction. And one of those things is a bit, bit of that dress, whether it's a lace or a tie or a strap that comes down along her right leg by the foot, I would be inclined, in spite of it being an iPhone photo, I would still pull it into Photoshop and tidy that up, pull that out, it's, uh, and perhaps even do the right leg. But um, I think this is the kind of shot for me, like if, if I brought this one home, I would say, do you know what, now I know exactly what I want to do. And I would, I would approach that and go in, actually reset the shot, get low, bring my big camera, really get that starburst. But for a, a documentary photo and for an iPhone photo, I think it's very well done. Very good. Yes, I think it is also a really cool photo, very smart. Um, I'm super happy that uh, they took the photo. I, I don't remember if it's he or she, I apologize. But, um, you know, sometimes this stuff just happens around you. And iPhones and Androids, they're like really good cameras. So, you know, if you don't have your, your big camera and something interesting is happening, and like she got herself or he got himself in a great position, and I don't mind the people walking back there like Angela said. I think it's kind of neat that like these people are just dancing and they're being romantic and wonderful like despite the rest of the world going on. They're just ignoring the world and I think it's I think it's super wonderful. And the way those vertical stones uh, line up right through the shadow of the legs is very smart. I don't know if that was done on purpose or just you know the photographer noticed it. I think it's, uh, it's a really clever photo all around so I think it's I think it's awesome. Okay. All right, so that's that. Okay, next up for bid is John Arnold. John, I think you might be muted. We cannot hear your, your wise words in your British accent. Yeah, you're right. I muted myself. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so let me get my screen shared for you, and I will tell you about Daniel. So here we go. Right. I hope you have Robin Griggs Wood narrating this this video. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I'd known that was that was necessary, I would have gone for that. So this is Daniel. Um, I should mention uh, our, my cohort's been going about two weeks, and we've only got about ten people in it so far. So I was choosing from a very small selection of photographs, but having said that. Uh, when I first joined the the Arcanum, I kind of uh, uh, I was intimidated by the by the quality of my fellow masters. And having started my cohort, I'm now intimidated by the quality of my cohort members. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead because there's a story with this video. So th this video uh, is is something that Daniel has made, and this is not my submission. Um, but um, so I, in actual fact, I, I felt like I had an embarrassment of riches, and it was very 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 hard to choose. Um, which picture to go for, but I kind of chosen uh, a picture from Daniel because I think that there's a couple of really interesting things about this guy. First of all, he's German, um, his English is not his first language, and he is doing this you know, in a foreign language and doing remarkably well with it. Second of all, he um, is experimenting so much with his photography. Um, if you look at uh, uh, the, the the range of stuff he's done, so that that, that video I'll, I'll come back to in a second and explain. If you look at the range of stuff he's done, um, you know it, it, it's it shows a variety of uh, uh, of styles and a variety of interests. Um, I'll click through a couple of these, um, and he's he's just he's just trying everything out. And whenever he comes across something he wants to have a go at, he throws himself into it. He really does. I love this one. This one's got a, a real sort of instamatic feel about it. Um, but uh, um, let me get back to that video, and I'll explain why I've cho chosen it. Because this guy, um, as well as um, submitting, obviously, photographs, he's uh, he's he, he put in his two truths and one lie. We, we, we have these sections in, the, in the, a lot of the communities where people have to put two true things about themselves and one lie. And one of his truth and lie things was, I'm conquering the stratosphere. And this is what he meant. Um, so he made this video uh, by attaching, I, I guess, a GoPro to a weather balloon, uh, which went all the way to the edge of space. This, this is not, you know, he's not working for NASA or anything. This is just a guy who was interested enough 
to, to make this, this project himself. And this thing went, look at that. This is this is a private individual, and he's got he's got a camera right to the edge of space. So he he posted this video. It's a remarkable video. Um, the photograph I want to submit of his is this one, um, and uh, I asked uh, I asked him to, to give me a bit of text about about the image and how it was made uh, and what he was doing. He said he was on holiday on Mallorca, and uh, he wanted to get some shots of the sunrise and the sunset, um, and he got a load of plans. And this is a shot we've all seen before. We've all seen the jetty shot going off into the sun, sunset. But this one to me was just lifted by the presence of the guy sat at the end of the, of the jetty with his shoes off. And all of a sudden it goes from being a beautiful scenic shot to a shot where you become the guy on the jetty. Now you're the guy sitting there with your shoes off with the cool air and the warm sun and the beautiful view and the light reflecting off the wood uh, there are things I would do to change this photograph, but not many. I, I would probably give it a bit more color. I'd probably lift the, the light on the wood a bit. But it just, it's just so atmospheric to me. Um, and of all the pictures I looked at, I, I picked two or three that I thought were possible candidates, and I kept coming back to this one. And that was what told me that this was the picture I should choose. So uh, so that's my pick. I'm not going to say that Daniel's an orphan or that his house burned down at the age of three. Or, uh, uh, or or that he has a terrible drink problem and we need to save him from that. Or you know, he's just he's just a nice guy who's working really hard to improve his photography. And I think this has got um, uh, bags of atmosphere. Right, hit me with your critiques. <laughs> okay, bags of atmosphere coming at you, Angela. Go for it. Okay, I think this is. Um when you're describing it, I could really feel the atmosphere. I can't really tell with the resolution. Is the water choppy or is it... No, it's fairly smooth. It's fairly smooth. There's a little yeah. texture on the surface, but it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not a long exposure smooth. Yeah, that is really nice. The only thing I find a little distracting is how the bridge is a little off. It's not very centered, and I think that's what he was trying to do. So mm -hmm. the bridge comes a little bit up on the right and the left. But uh, for the... Um, Goal that he was trying to do of having a very serene image with the shoes off. I think it's he accomplished that. All right, good job, RBF. Next up, it's Mason. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm with Angela. I wish the the camera was just slightly to the right uh, to center the dock. I love the shoes. I love the shoes sitting there and the lone figure with the ears and and everything. It's 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 a very nice moment. Um, I think it would be magical, though, if it was if it had an, an ND kind of a long exposure look with the human figure in it. And so I wish he had um, taken a thirty-second or one-minute exposure and then, you know, put the human in there for maybe a shorter exposure. Um, it would be magical. It, it, it's a nice shot. It's a beautiful shot. I'm with you, John. I think the color could be punched up a little bit too. So mm, I agree. Okay, um, Robin, did I skip you? I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Robin, go um, ahead. Yeah, no, really, basically, just the same aspect about the the dock. It feels canted and it feels imbalanced to look at, so it makes it a little bit uncomfortable. Um, a lot of that saturation off to the side, which of course is the sky, but it's not really at your focal point, so it is a bit of a distraction being way over there, and. Um, Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I like the idea of it. It's just, for me, it's not that interesting of an image. Okay, good feedback, RTW. Okay, next up, uh, Ron Clifford, the Big Red Master. Yeah, uh, I echo what the others have said. But also, I, I mean, as far as putting it into the, the competition, I would love to see what this photographer does at level 18 and 19 with the same image. I, I would love to see what he does when he's he's really begun to explore those different things as post-processing tools because I think this is a, a photo that would really be helped by a little bit of Photoshop chops as far as uh, getting the symmetry right on and then giving me a little bit more of the the atmosphere in the color contrast in the sky. Give, give me some more atmosphere. I think it has the potential to be a top-notch image, but I think it's just at its beginning. 
right now. I, I think it's an incomplete image. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I've said a lot to him about the way I would post-process it. In fact, it's just here off the bottom of the um, the bottom of the comments. There, uh, I said many of the same things, and I do plan on getting him to post-process this. Yeah, I, I think um, he's got a great eye, and there's no no yeah, question agree. about it. And I think this will be inevitably a very strong image. Yes, that's good feedback, everybody, and. Uh, I generally agree. If it's going to be symmetrical, you need to have, my theory, is that you need to have the bigger objects, the main objects, exit the frame at the same place vertically. So you can see the, the right edge of the dock is exiting the frame much higher than the left frame of the dock. And same way a little bit with the, the mountains, although this is less extreme because the, the dock is so egregious, but like um, I would like the mountains to exit exactly the same spot or maybe have the same tones. You can see the mountain on the left is quite strong and contrasty on the right is less contrasty. That's a, that's a minor thing. But I think it's not a terrible image, um, but um, it, it, could be, it could be stronger, as everyone else has said. Okay, thank you, John Arnold. Okay, last up, Ron Clifford. What apprentice are you representing today in the Great Challenge? Well... I am representing Marjorie McDonald. Uh, let me let me do my screen share here for you guys, and um, as long as I, I got your ear here, um, I just want to. Um, this one's not Marjorie's actually. I'm just going to run through a couple of images as as we get to hers at the very end because I want to talk about the cohort of the brave because in a large part Marjorie's responsible for the cohort of the brave. Um, this is Amanda's image here and uh, this is a brand new one from Denise. This is one of her first attempts that that really left the photographic realm uh, being brave, leaving that uh, preconceived idea that everything has to look just like a photograph. Um, and connection, Isabel, one of my students, just nailed it. Composition with the portrait and connection and, and uh, ta tackling portraiture. Holy yeah. cow. And Jennifer, beautiful woman, she, she loves florals and wanted to begin to give her images impact, take them to a new level. And she has just hammered it out of the park with this one. Um, learning post-processing skills and doing things. Another one, you know, that uh, leaving that, that photograph and moving into the realm of fine art. These people are being very brave. Mark Helm, one of our new masters coming up. He's in the fast track now through... Uh, going to be in the Master Candidate program. Um, and he is he's retired. He's uh, about to turn 67 years old. And his passion is to reach out to other retired people who want to explore their creativity like this and, and uh, just get way beyond a... Oh, anyway, I get choked up when I talk about this. Stephanie uh, wanted to explore some composite work and move outside of her comfort zone and get brave. And so she did that image right there. And Marjorie. And I want to spend a few seconds on Marjorie here. Marjorie McDonald um, created a post about being brave. One of the things I did, in the Arcanum, you're given level 10 for accepting sphere to go into sphere 1 from sphere 0. And so you're granted level 10. And I said to my cohort, I'm not granting anybody anything. You're going you're gonna to have to write to me about something you want to achieve that's outside your grasp right now. Uh, something that the, is, is you, you feel you need help to accomplish. And Marjorie wrote about uh, doing a style shoot and, and, and working with people and doing things that are just, just outside that zone, and she is constantly pushing that envelope. And when she posted this one, it was like I just fell off my chair. I mean, look at the expression on that snail's face. That snail has an expression, my goodness. <laughs> that snail, you know, we know this is a composite, but I am absolutely convinced that that is her pet. <laughs> or that she's the snail's pet, I can't tell which. And so I think compositionally, I think limited color palette, clarity on the subject, and excellent uh, composite skills make this the, the clear winner for the day, I think. <laughs> Ron... You are a gift from heaven. Uh, where did you come from? Not only was this a genius display of, of mastery, how you 
happened to mention a few various members of your cohort, but how you built this up in a very kind of loving way, and then you threw down the gauntlet at the end with a little bit of bravado. It was a perfect mix of awesomeness. So thank you, Ron. This was well done, well played, Ron Clifford. Okay, now let's jump right into the critiques, starting with you, Angela Pan. I love how the eye lines of both the little girl and the snail is going down. I think it adds a lot of interest to the image. The only thing that I wish it had was the leaf that was taken at a different angle so that the line kind of goes through the whole image and not just cuts it in half. So you're really just looking at the right side of the image and you're not using the whole rectangle of um, a shot. But otherwise, I think it's a very interesting photo to look at. Uh, next, Mason Marsh. Yeah, I really like this photo. It's uh, I don't know how you get a macro photo like this with a with a human being in it. I I have tried um, being snarky, of course. I, I really like this. It, it's a great composite. I'm with Angela. I wish the the left side was maybe maybe cropped in a little bit to enhance the verticality of it. Um, I think that. It, it the sort of the feeling of precipitousness of the person in the snail looking over the edge I, I think would be enhanced more if it was a stronger vertical. Um, but I love the colors, I love the shallow depth of field, and it's it's a really fun composite, uh, very well done. And yes, Ron, your presentation was um, uh, very touching. Uh, Mason begrudgingly says, "Okay." And next up <laughs> is RGW. All right, so first I want to say, Marjorie, I know your work well, dear, and I love your work. So um, please take this with a grain of salt because um, compositing is not easy to do. The very strong depth of field that you have in the base image with the grass and the snail, um, she doesn't match that focus. Your snail, you got tack sharp. Yeah, you nailed that image. But she is, she is super sharp. And they just don't, they don't connect, they don't go together. The other thing you want to look at is light bounce and what's happening when light comes in. So she's actually going to be having a little bit of green bounced into her. And I, I can see some more compositing stuff here, but I think those are a couple of things that you could take a look at in your next composite. Otherwise, it's very fun. I love the idea. Okay, and next, John Arnold. Okay, the, the first word that leaps to mind for me for this one is whimsical, and I love that. Um, a, lo a few of you guys have said you wish that it was cropped from the left. I don't agree. I like the fact that there's a lot of space in this shot. This is a negative space used to give the sense of scale. Uh, the reason they're small in the frame is to encourage the viewer to see them as small, and uh, it works for me. I like that. I like that You know, rule of thirds composition and the negative space, the, the simple color, uh, but I do agree with Robin that the the compositing, um, she is sharper than the snail and she should be a little softer. Um, and also reflected light means that she doesn't quite sit easily in the frame. She should, as Robin said, she should be a little green. But apart from that, um, whimsical and I, and I love it. Yes, all great feedback, everyone. It was so interesting to hear what Robin said about this because I consider Robin to be one of the greatest, you know, um, compositors of, of our age. She's so good at it and she sees stuff in these in these uh, kinds of images that I, I don't see. So to hear her say that it just makes a lot of sense now that I see it. And I think it's because that background image is so shallow depth of field it's like f1.1 or f1.0. I mean super shallow shallow. And so you know if that was a little bit wider you know f1.4 or f2 then it does make sense for this for both of those subjects to be in sharp focus, but it does feel a little bit too pasted on. Um, this is a super minor complaint because I think the image is really interesting, um, and I know Marjorie's a super interesting photographer. Uh, th that's a very small complaint, though. I, I think that if Robin had not said that, I would not have noticed it, but this is one reason that I love watching critiques so much in the Arcanum. I just sit there and watch critiques all day long. It's unbelievable because hearing these other masters talk about photos, I hear stuff all the time from all these various minds that would have never occurred to me. So, so anyway, this is just a, a small uh, snippet yeah, just of gonna, reality for let me. Just, 
let me just kind of say one thing, and I, I, you know, Robin, you're here. Marjorie and I actually worked on this, and I, I, this is the before image. We did do some work on getting her, the the girl, to have uh, the correct light that the same the same light that's on the snail on her. But I didn't have access to that image quickly, and I knew it was going to bite me. I knew it was going to come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, Marjorie. I didn't show the the final final image. I will sneak in and go take a look because I really do love the the creativity of it and the, the whole concept of it is very nice. See, Ron, you cannot get away with anything when RGW is in the house. No, she will no, nail you to the wall. It's like we're all the apprentices eye. of RGW. <laughs> I think those were all really good points. Again, I think a, a really strong motorized vehicle could have helped the image, but small point once again. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. All right. So, uh, what happens now, Gino and Stuart? You guys are my co-producers of the show. Well, Is it time for a, this, a yeah. voting, or should we have one final um, kind of reverse order uh, pray for votes? Well, normally what happens is you go away and spend 30 minutes trying to count to five, and while the rest of the Arcana Masters kind of do a little extra pimping, I don't know how Ron's going to pimp his cohort any harder than he did. He could probably melt faces all over the Internet if he did it any, any harder than that. But uh, this could be the opportunity for everybody to give their last little mm, right there at the end, you know. Um, Andrew, for I, example, I have a down. live uh, update from the um, Arcanum uh, you know, elves that are working on the, the system behind the scenes. The new release is live. I just heard this from Curtis and Ron, we have a, or Curtis and Pete. We have a chat going on right now. The release is live. So anyone that happens to be a, a member of the Arcanum that's watching this, just log in. You might see all kinds of new stuff, and you'll get an exact list of everything that's new coming up. Okay, uh, I got to go, guys. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, uh, Gino, you're, you're very close to the actual um, progress of the show, but before I go away and begin my tabulation, I want each of the masters to go in reverse order and share their photo one more time, and I want them to give one final 10 to 15 second push about why people should vote for their photo, and it's also just sort of a gentle reminder which photo are we actually voting on, because... If you're like me, you just have a, a super terrible memory. I don't even remember what what Angela showed, for example. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. So we're going to start with you, Ron. Uncle Cliffy. Okay. Well, you heard all about uh, Marjorie being brave, but I just want to point out: uh, uh, no matter who took the photograph, uh, a photograph is about connection, and it's about uh, the emotion and the message. And I, I think that this image stands on its own with, with oh, being verbose, without a lot of discussion. This image just speaks for itself. And so that's what I have to say. Excellent. Very good. Okay, now going in reverse order, number four, John Arnold. Okay, just sharing my screen again. There you go. Um, I, I kind of want to just, just remind you uh, that, that the purpose of this image is to give you a sense of what it's like to be there and to be the guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it has some issues that we are going to solve. Um, but I really think this is, this is it's, it's, like, it's like fine Egyptian cotton before it's made into those sheets that you're going to sleep on. You can just tell that there's quality. There's quality material here. And I and I and I think it deserves your vote. Mm. So we have Peterman. The Peterman catalog makes it into two shows in a row. Yes, uh, John has pulled the Egyptian cotton card, which is always <laughs> Darn it, Egyptian cotton wasn't one of the da danger words. <laughs> no, it was not. But it should have been. Dang it. Next okay, time. Robin, why should these other masters vote for yours uh, over the others? Well, just think about lack of pre-planning. 
the decisive moment here. She just saw it and she took it and it happened. She made an excellent photograph out of it. Other than the fact that, you know, she's good with animals and she plays such beautiful music. And actually I took Ursula in here because I felt that she needed a confidence boost like a crazy and I absolutely think she's a fabulous, you know, fabulously creative person. So yeah, I wanted her to get that confidence boost. I like the fact that Robin incorporated Angela, one of the other masters in the show, in the picture. I mean, you know, that's that's. I think that's bonus points right there. Amazing. No. <laughs> okay, next up is Mason Marsh. Yeah, I just want to remind folks that um, one of the core principles of the Arcanum is vulnerability, and uh, just putting it out there, and, and you know letting people see your flaws and and yes this is not a perfect image there are some artifacts from the processing but what is clear is the feel and the tone and the effort that Paul puts into every photograph he is a lifelong learner he is um, a, a gentle soul that crawls across the earth and only wants to make beautiful photographs he doesn't want to prove anything. He's not out there trying to, you know, be a anything that he's not. He just wants to make beautiful photographs for people to enjoy. And it's easy to poke fun at people like that. But you got to remember where they come from and where they're headed. And those are the types of people that we want in the Arcanum. So um, I once again humbly present the work of my cohort, my apprentice, and my friend, Paul Zellers. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> By the way, Gentle Soul is one of the voting categories, so keep that in mind. That was very well done. Have you ever we been to like Toastmasters-y Toast Masters type uh, little speech you gave? Well, I, I'm almost through the bottle of <laughs> so. That's good. The it's all, been a long day. <laughs> drink during the show because they become so verbose, they make these amazing closing statements, and everything seems to flow with the universe. Well done. Well done, Mason. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Last, Angela B. Pan. Yes. Can you see the picture? Uh -huh. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you all of Sherry's first images where we showed the macro images and just her growth in trying to experiment with new things. This was the only image that you really wanted to look deeper in and saw these cool birds and um, once you look more, the more that you see in it. The only one that we all agreed that would look great blown up, you wanted to see it in print. And the only one that really didn't have any negative feedback. So I just think that this image really deserves to win and just for simplicity, for wanting to delve more into it and to see it in person. See it in person. Jeez, man, the claws just come out in these Holy last little cow, yeah. too, right? Man. Angela, I'm surprised she didn't just like throw bags of urine at the other judges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That was some top quality, subtle you know, a little uh, reverse negativism right there. That was really good. I, I think the the right. canon is starting to, to uncover actually some new gifts amongst the masters. It's, uh, <laughs> All our passive aggressivity is coming out in spades uh, here. Yeah, last week it was Karen Hutton with the claws. This week Angela B. Pan. So nice. I like it. I, I okay, now, for the viewing I audience. Negativity. Uh, for the viewing audience and for the judges, here's how the voting works. Each of the five masters has been given five silver talents, which is a unit of currency in this book whose prime fiction we lift from liberally, which is the name of the wind, which is indeed a book that I want all apprentices and masters to read someday. In so doing, you will level up as my friend. But uh, these five silver talents will be given to various apprentices whose work has been shown tonight. Okay, each master can give um, no more and three silver talents to any particular apprentice, and they cannot give any talents at all to their own apprentice, although that would go without saying because there's a tremendous conflict of interest, as one might assume. Each of these masters who you see in the hangout has been given a 
personalized chat hangout for me. If they have not received it, please let me know. They are now sending their votes to me. I will tabulate them thusly as they roll in. In the meantime, Gino, perhaps come up with a topic for conversation as I check out and begin my tabulation services. All right, excellent. Now, last week, this, this took the uh, majority of the time of the show was Trey counting to five because apparently people had a hard time like just writing in simplistic fashion. But hopefully we will have slimmed that down this week. Trey, did you send them all like a some sort of a streamlined way of tabulating their votes this week? Last week you I got did. things like in very cryptic fashion. In fact, I have sent each of them a, a nice template, okay? And I have incoming votes already from John Arnold and Robin Griggs Woods that have not used my template at all. They've started their own template. Okay? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll I will tell you that with no surprise, the only person that did it almost perfectly was Ron Clifford, except he left off number five, which was his own, which I can kind of get around. Um, Angela's is completely off the reservation. Angela just sent me. I should share my screen. Okay, this is going to be another long tabulation session, I will tell you. Okay. <laughs> By no fault of my own, because I want to make sure that I'm correct. Okay, so let's just keep the conversation going, Gino. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to extrapolate what these masters have told me. Yeah, I like last week during the post-show hangout, Trey, like, screen shared really late, like, the hieroglyphics that he got sent. I swear I couldn't figure out what one of them was. Like, I had no concept of what the person had voted on based on what they sent Trey. So while I was making fun of him last week, I, I actually afterwards felt some a small, small modicum of pity for him. So yes. it's 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 five talents each. Can we like pass the hat and get you a calculator, Trey? Calculators <laughs> help when you're when people are sending chicken scratch, you know. Yeah. Are you ever like thinking. handwritten? Yeah. So I, I some feedback off of this whole thing that I thought was really interesting is kind of Trey kind of said it there. But when y'all would initially show your pictures, like especially the one of the little girl with the snail on the leaf, like all I was thinking was, wow, that's amazing, right? And I thought that on quite a few of them. I'm just using that one, for example. I really couldn't even think of anything. Even the train, the one with the train. I was like, oh, my God, what a great image. You know, who's, who's going to dare say anything negative? But then your criticisms uh, came out, which a lot of people in this society can't handle criticisms, right? They don't like being criticized. But they were so valid that you really can't find as an artist. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, he's frozen. You ever <laughs> notice it always is frozen on that really, really, really important part where somebody is just about to say... <laughs> right, <laughs> you exactly. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, and the killer well, is... While we wait for him to return, I've got one thing that the, appre pre that the apprentices should all know about the new release of the Arcanum, and that is that when they next log in, or when some of them next log in, they'll get the chance to rate their master. So you guys get to critique oh, us. Oh. We now get to critique you. So that'll be a We're in trouble now. <laughs> you guys. It's been a real oh, good, pleasure. I, I can take this opportunity then to warn, to warn my cohort. But if you give me a bad rating, I can do the same with you. <laughs> wow. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding, guys. I want wow. you to be Suddenly, I don't want to be in Robin's cohort. Wow. <laughs> so much for nurturing. There you go. <laughs> well, no, I'm just I mean, trying to make the show interesting. Gino, Gino. Gino's frozen. Sorry. Yeah, I know Gino's gonna gonna pop back in, but I wanna I, w I just wanna mention that about uh, we, we uh, at the Arcanum we feel very strongly about good critique and about encouraging critique that leaves the apprentice with something to work towards. It does absolutely no good, and this is the people within our cohorts understand this, but the people that are watching that may not be in them may not understand it. It does no good to say something like, "Oh, you know, I don't like the horizon," you know, or "Oh, the colors are awful." And uh, I just wanted to point out that we really feel very strongly that a critique needs to be um, concise and it needs to offer um, input that leaves the apprentice with something they can work with. And so it's really important to be encouraging but also be honest. So yeah, I just I, wanted to put that. 
the critiques that I give in this that I gave in the show they are nothing like what I actually do. First, I find out what the person's goal is. I really want to know, and I want to I want to find out if they actually feel that they've achieved that goal. And then I help them find out if 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 they didn't achieve that goal, I help them figure out how to achieve it. That's how I give critiques. Yeah, I would add to that too that the Arcanum is for those that aren't in cohorts now. The Arcanum is a progressive experience. Um, this is not just a a critique that you buy and it's a one-off experience. You are you are progressing and there's constant building through the levels and I think it's one of the brilliant um, parts of Trey and Peter and, and Curtis's model is this progression and we, we go back to remember your first critique and when you learn this and now we're talking about this and um, this is where the master and apprentice model really shines in that it's it's always building on what we've built on before and um, I I don't think it comes through really well in these types of critiques because we're kind of rapid fire, mm -hmm. but um, you know it's it's so immersive and there's so much time, and that we spend as masters and apprentices in the Arcanum, and I just love uh, the fact that I have the time to spend with my apprentices. It's really a treat. Agreed. And that uh, Paul sent me an email saying that that was not an HDR shot. He thinks the clarity slider may have, may have put some artifacts into that shot. So if you want to go ahead and change your votes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the, I, I hit enter. I can't. I can't oh, you didn't? You can't send another message wrong? I know you know how to use that chat function. Come on now. Okay, I have now um, officially tabulated the results, but before what? I announce the wow. winner. No, after after my comment, which I didn't mean to be too harsh, I apologize. I'm really actually a super loving dude. I just, I'll figure stuff out, okay? I'll, I'll be zen. Whatever happens, happens. If you guys send me format weird stuff, I'll, I'll figure it out, okay? But in the meantime, before I tell you the final result, I want to show you the latest release of the Arcanum. This is only one aspect of many aspects, okay? Let me share my screen. Prepare for mind blowing. Um, sorry for the slow build-up for it. I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen, and I'm sharing it thusly. This is the new. This is the new grand library. And you can see the top grand library. And what we have here is it begins with editors' picks. All right, which is super duper awesome, and we're going to be constantly rotating these things with new editors picks. Like for example, here you can see this amazing level 14 critique by uh, Karen Hutton, which is kind of highlighted here. We have all kinds of other stuff. Um, we have this uh, semi uh, lascivious thing here from Jessica Lark, who knows what that's about. Uh, we have another lascivious thing here from. Uh, Doug K. This is uh, Apre Fro. You need to watch his intro. Thing, by the way. Seeing these two things together makes me think like, whoa, this is quite a dichotomy. I'm just thinking, just you know, want to ride the stash there. Okay, so scrolling down. By the way, hey, Stuart, are you responsible for these editor's picks? I am indeed, yes. <laughs> I am said editor. <laughs> okay, and how often will you swap out these editor's picks? Um, I'm hoping for weekly, but um, yeah, it depends what the powers that be say. Yes, we're just about to openly announce the new uh, Grand Library subscription, and so this is one reason we added this stuff in, uh, but also it's a great benefit to all internal Arcana members. And then as you scroll down, you see all kinds of stuff here, like um, you can sort by popularity, because we have this sort of Reddit-style voting now, we're based on thumbs up or whatever, uh, the most popular ones go to the top. Mason Marsh, look at that, you're number one. Oh, Mason, all you right. Are. Up on top of Reddit. Look at that. And la look, you're way above last week's Creation Wars. Not even close. You have just trounced it. Unjalobable. Very, very good. Okay, so here I am to announce the winner of Episode 2, Week 2 of the Creation Wars. And this is, there's, it's incontrovertible. The level to which that this winner has won. I've never seen a vote in our young infancy that's so extreme. But by a landslide, the winner 
is Angela B. Pan. Yay! 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 Thank you, guys. So, Angela, show us this image one more time. Okay. This By the way, is... there, there, there was a tie for second place, so it was it was uh, pretty interesting in second place. I will not reveal uh, anything less than number one, uh, but the results are very interesting. Okay, it's an honor just to be nominated, as they say. Okay, let's sh show us the winner, Angela. So this is Sherry Miller's image of the lake by her house of the birds flying by. I'm sorry, I don't know the title. I'll try to find out. I'll try to find it out soon. Very good. Great image, Angela. Yay! Yay. 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 Uh, but, but thanks again for everyone for participating in uh, in this week's um, creation course. Now let's let's move on to a lighter topic. So one thing that we ask the masters loosely to do is either to bring along a quick tip, and or maybe some recent work they've done, or maybe just a favorite photo they want to share. Um, and so we'll go through this in a fairly uh, random order. Who's who's up to go? Um, I can go. Go for it. Okay, so now you, you don't already have like a video ready to roll for your presentation here. Do absolutely you? not. Okay, all right. Gino, El Gino, I'm just gonna go to my website here. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So Very this awesome one website. right now is like one of my favorite composites that I've done. It actually was all built from scratch, except for of course the woman. Uh, but I basically just took some textures that I shot to create these back walls and to create the quote-unquote artwork on the walls. And these are also textures, just um, some fallen debris and the brick wall I shot downtown. And uh, of course the sunset was actually a genuine sunset. But anyway, otherwise, and then I painted the skirt. So um, to be able to create something that's a, you know, a full-on composite, you really don't have to have it all be... Um, you know, very specific things, you can just sort of create from your imagination. Um, and then uh, this one is so far like my favorite, but you have to um, do hang gliding up above Los Angeles and shoot with your camera to get this. Yeah. And I'm totally kidding. Um, it was just uh, on a whim. I have always wanted to have um, like one of these shots of fog rolling in, you know, like you have in Dubai, but um, I haven't been able to get to Dubai lately. So I just took a a shot from a helicopter that I had uh, got on a helicopter flight and um, added my own clouds from another <laughs> airplane flight and added some hair, hang glider people that I'd shot at another time. So just let your creativity run. And that's it for me. Very cool. Who wants to uh, go next with either a quick tip or uh, share some work? I can do it if you like. Yes. Okay, I have. Um, I, I thought this was like a pick of the week, a bit like on Twit, so I brought a product. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay, right. Um, so I, I want to just give a quick shout out to these guys. Um, uh, I know a couple of the guys that started this company. It looks like a really cool product. It's called the Loom Cube. Uh, they're running a Kickstarter right now. Um, it's little cubes of light that can be controlled from your, from your smartphone. Um, you can run up to five from a single smartphone. They're water resistant. They've got tons of ways of attaching them. They look really cool, and um, it's worth a look. Check them out on Kickstarter, and if you like them, back them. Simple as that. I agree. Thumbs up on the Loom Cube. I've been looking at that thing. It is a pretty sweet little product. Right yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Anyone else have a tip or a uh, photo to yeah. share? I have, a, I have a tip, a technique tip. Oh, go for it. Out? based on an image that I shared this week. Because it's so crappy and cold here, snow and rain and wind, my whole house is shaking from the wind. Um, so I, I did this set for a, a water skier and I actually had to go back twice, but I just want to share this really quick tip that uh, if you're in a situation like this and you're photographing somebody in water, you can't use autofocus. Uh, the reason you can't use autofocus is because it will try to focus um, on the, the drops right here. Um, one of the advantages is that she's on a rope that's that's you know 50 whatever feet behind me 
but it's not perfect. As she moves side to side, they're stretching the rope, she kind of leaves. So what I do is I actually have my camera on autofocus when I'm doing these. And as she approaches this turn, I touch quickly for the autofocus. And yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, I touch quickly on the autofocus and on my Nikon, if while you're holding the autofocus down, you grab the focus ring, it overrides it and you can tweak it in a, in a, in a fraction of a second. Because moving at 60 kilometers an hour across the screen, your shutter is going, I don't care if you got 10 frames a second, uh, you're going to miss more than you get. And you want to make sure that either you're shooting fully manually focused or if you're on autofocus, while you touch and grab it, just before the shot, tweak your focus. And it'll, 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 lock, it'll stay on her. But don't leave it on autofocus and expect a shot like that to turn out. Great. Good tip, Ron. Uh, look, it looks like you have a plus one there, Mason. I usually come with a plus one. Um, this one is... <laughs> <laughs> this is Claire, my uh, seven-month-old, and this is how I process almost all my photos. <laughs> it is with Claire on my shoulders because it leaves one hand free. Um, and I will, sh I will show a, a screen share if you'd like. Um, this is uh, – I can get it to pop up there. Did you guys see that? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Hard, hard to concentrate. Beautiful. Um, we have a beautiful Japanese garden here in Portland, and there's this famous maple tree that everybody um, has photographed a million times. And I go there every year and photograph it, and some years are better than others. This year was pretty good. Uh, it was a medium year for fall color. But one of the techniques I wanted to share was this is actually a um, three-stitch panorama of uh, three images I made with the tilt-and-shift lens. And what a lot of people do with tilt-and-shift lenses is they create that miniature town look <laughs> with it with a blur uh, by, by tilting the lens. I never tilt my lens. I always use the shift function, which allows me to take three uh, full-resolution photos and then uh, using Photoshop's panorama feature, I stitch them together and then using some layering, uh, do some focus stacking, things like this. So this is a work in progress, still working on the background, um, but this is uh, this year's fall color and it's a shot that I hope to have done in <laughs> sometime this winter as soon as the baby lets go of my my head. So. <laughs> okay, hopefully you're using non-GMO hair care product because she's just sucking it all off. Actually, yeah, it looks like I have product in my hair. It's almost all baby slobber. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's you want to something there. Mason's grooming techniques. Yeah, it's a great way to save money. I used to have a full head of hair, but she's pulled off all the stuff on the top. Oh, By the way, Mason, if you, would have, if you would have brought the baby into it while you were showing your cohort's uh, yeah. picture earlier, I think yeah. we would have had a slam dunk win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, Gino, I'd like to think my, my cohort's photos stand on their own. Well, your baby doesn't stand on her own, and she's <laughs> working, so, I mean, you know. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Everybody needs one of those. Where can you get those, by the way? Those are awesome. Um, they actually come from females, Gino. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I only get scowls. That would explain yeah. it. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> I like the overall color palette that you're using on this baby. Very nice. It's yes. calming. <laughs> <laughs> it's, she's a work in progress. There's still some processing to do here. Um, yeah. but, you know, well, you can tell happy. it's a female because look how enraptured she is with staring at herself on the screen. So <laughs> Actually, she's, she's staring at the microphone, um, which has a red light on it. So... Uh, uh. She's pretty easily yes. Ah, so That's cute. Dad, you told. <laughs> <laughs> She's seven months and she looks like my wife. So, um, man, you've got my, a really young wife. <laughs> I do have a beautiful wife. Yeah. I have a beautiful wife. My son looks like me, and he's the only four-year-old with a gray beard. It's really unfortunate. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, what can you do? He looks just like you. Are you sure about that? Exact, exactly like me. It's 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 a Benjamin Button kind of thing. It's we All don't right. like chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anyone have anything else they want to share? I, I got. I actually have some from yesterday. Um, You're away. Show, 
All right. I don't normally show pictures because it's not really. Uh, I'm not one of your Arcana masters, but it's okay. uh, okay. as you know, I came back from camping just to do this show tonight, and um, there were a couple of interesting shots. Are you looking at my screen? We're looking at your mug. I'm still oh. watching Mason's baby. Oh well, well, I think you've made the right choice. Um, let's see, screen share. There's a big button over here that says screen share. Share. How about that? We currently see uh, a black screen. We see Photoshop, but nothing yeah. in it. But there's nothing in it, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you have to share your own screen. screen. Yeah, every well, tab looks empty. Well, hey, do you, that's... Uh, just unscreen share it, then re-screen share with the desktop and switch to Photoshop. You'll get it. All right. Uh, let's screen see. Share. Screen share. Yeah, All right, so Gina, while you get your act together, I'm going to have a real professional Angela go in your stead. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, We're going to watch you scout. Cool. It's, uh... It's supposed to be a panorama, but I don't know if it's coming out to be that yeah. way. But it was uh, shot at the end of the summer um, with a storm coming through. And for some reason, there was uh, just two colors in the sky, and I used the Washington Monument to divide the two. Um, I wanted to take more and get a higher, um, just a higher view of the monument, but the rain started just pouring as I was taking this shot. So this is four images stitched together of a storm coming through D.C. It's awesome. Thank you. Cool. I like it, Angela. Very cool. Uh, Gino, yes? Oh, who? I have no idea if I'm actually sharing Yeah, you're screen sharing, do you know? Just switch to... Oh, you did it. All you had to do was switch to Photoshop. Is that it right there? No, you unscreen share it again. God dang it. This is so annoying. You, you guys are jerks for knowing how to do this. <laughs> Just screen share and then choose desktop and then switch to Photoshop. Then you're done. You're good. All right, go on to somebody else then, because that's just way too complicated for me. <laughs> okay. Okay, anybody else want to go? Yes, no, 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 yes. Okay, I'll, I'll do a quick one. Uh, I'll just show one photo. Um, oh, Gino so, got it, by the way. But go ahead. Hold, hold that thought. Just keep screen sharing, Gino. You're doing fine. Um, <laughs> so... So those of you that are members of the Arcanum or Grand Library members, um, I have a whole video on how I took this photo. Um, this is a wonderful dancer named Lindy. She's British, and I was with her and a big group of people in uh, Tokyo. And this is the busiest intersection in the world. It's called uh, Shibuya Crossing. And it's something like, a, it's crazy. Like a quarter million people go through this place per day or something. I don't know the numbers, but it's insane. And so we would keep trying to get the shot, and we tried again and again and again. And finally, like on the fifth or sixth time, um, we went out there, and then I figured out the most interesting shot was getting down on the ground and shooting her up in the air. Um, now, she actually, um, it looks like she's jumping higher than she is, uh, but she's still jumping pretty dang high. And I tried to get her up between the buildings and kind of get motion around her and just try to frame her and make a study of blues and a study of, of the air and, and what it's like when someone dressed in blue is up in the air. and Just sort of sort of surreal and like everyone's ignoring her and she's just dancing. and That's what I was going for in this photo. All the commercialism around her and she's just kind of free and flowing. So anyway, if you want to see this video, just uh, you know, jump into the Grand Library and search for um, maybe Japan. That, that should find it for you. Uh, but anyway, there's there's something for you to enjoy, and I will stop screen sharing and switch to Gino. So Gino, uh, switch over to your other screen now. Oh well, I was I was enjoying yours. Can you see the leaf? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this was on my truck. I I was I'm camping. Uh, my whole family is up camping as I drove back into town today to do the show, and then I'll go back tonight. But um, up in Huntsville, Texas. Uh, which, by the way, just north of Huntsville, Texas, is the big thicket where there's the second most Bigfoot sightings on the planet have happened in the big thicket. So this is key. But anyway, 
uh, our, this leaf was frozen on my windshield this morning as I got up to leave to come here. <laughs> That's and pretty cool. That is fantastic. Yeah, and it made this, I, I couldn't figure out, it made these little concentric rings around the outside, which I really thought was really cool. So I grabbed the 50 millimeter prime and just took a quick picture of it as the sun was shining through the leaf through my windshield. And um, so I thought that one was cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not, you know, don't have any cool Japanese maples. Thanks a lot, Mason, for just pretty much destroying this picture. I don't have nothing. <laughs> I'm going to take a, like a chainsaw and just chop this tree down now. But anyway, uh, I thought it was cool at the time. Now I hate it. But um, there's the same picture looking up at it. Lots of cool, pretty colors. So uh, anyway, just a few those pictures. Are, those are gorgeous, Gino. But you know, you, you don't suffer. Have to, you, don't, you don't have to you, say that, Rob. It's you okay. suffer. You suffer so well. It makes me feel like I never have to suffer again. Yeah. You're so well, good uh, at it. Yeah, Woody Thank Allen. You. Woody yeah. Allen is my mentor, so I, I really well. Gino, anyway. I'm curious about the sky in your photos. It, it it looks like it's blue. What is that? Blue sky, yeah, I know in Portland y'all don't have blue sky, but uh, I think we had some in August. Yeah, do y'all have any blue doors? What? I just said what? Oh, what? 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 I, it's a total accident. I didn't mean to say that. It's okay. That's we already did the critique. It's done. It's your it's your rules, Trey. <laughs> it's gone. Blue okay, door. so now is the time to bring the uh, the proper show to an end. Uh, mm -hmm. Those subscribers that are on Patreon that actually um, pay, I think it, I guess it's five dollars an episode. Is that right, uh, Gino? They get to see uh, the pre-show parte and the after-show parte, which we're about to begin. Uh, but we want to thank all of our Patreon members. We want to thank everyone in the Arcanum, even everyone that watches it for free after it's released a week later. We really appreciate you watching this show. Uh, tell your friends, so on and so forth. It's uh, you guys are awesome. So anyway. <laughs> So for, for everyone here, uh, thank you for watching uh, episode number two. We're just getting our feet underneath us. Uh, thanks for all your feedback. We're going to keep growing the show as we get feedback from you guys. Uh, we're here for you. Um, I'm here for all the masters and the apprentices of the Arcanum. Uh, this is an incredible experience. I feel uh, honored to be on this great journey uh, with all of you. So anyway, now at the end of the show comes the time when everyone kind of waves goodbye, their little thumbnail waves. And um, and then we will just say we will bid you adieu, and we will see you. Uh, we'll see you next week. I'm going to end with a baby shot. You cannot lose. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Yay. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Bye. I'm so glad we had this time together. And scene. <laughs>